In this uh, chapter of dynamics, uh, what are you going to learn? Uh, is going, you're going to learn about uh, Newton's three laws first. And after you have learned uh, Newton's three laws, then we're going to talk about the conservation of momentum. Uh, all right? So let's talk about Newton's three laws. So before we talk about Newton's three laws, we talk about the definition of momentum. So how would you define momentum? Product of the mass and its velocity. Uh. So what's the unit for momentum? Kilogram meter per second, right? Uh. So is it a vector or a scalar quantity? Vector. Now because it is a vector, right, many people right, um, don't understand uh, how to calculate the change of momentum. For example, uh, let's say you have a floor here and then a ball comes towards the floor and let's say the mass is m, the speed is v. Uh. And let's assume it undergoes a perfectly elastic collision, which we're going to learn perfectly elastic means Ke is conserved. So that means it will still bounce off with a speed of V. Lah. So what would be your change in momentum? By the way, the symbol for momentum is small p. Alright, so what is the change in momentum? So many people will say, oh, coming is mv, going back also mv, so the change is zero, which is wrong. Because it is a vector, so we have to have a uh, direction. So let's say we take uh, downwards as positive. You can set your sign convention. If you set downwards as positive, then you can find your change of momentum by taking either the initial momentum minus final or final minus initial. Because some people, uh, they only know one way, which is final momentum minus initial momentum. Now, can you use initial momentum minus final momentum? You can. Because the word change usually is modulus. Modulus means we don't care whether it's positive or negative at the end. Nah. But when we are subtracting to find the change in momentum, then we have to consider direction. Example, ah. let's say I take final momentum. Oh, sorry, I used a blue color. Ah. So let's say I use final momentum minus initial momentum. So what is a final momentum since I'm taking downwards as positive? So it will be negative mv, right? Not? Because it's moving up. Then I would minus mv because your initial momentum is positive downwards. So I will get negative 2 mv. But if I take the change in momentum as final mom uh, is initial momentum minus final momentum, I will take mv minus negative mv, which also gives me 2 mv. But the only difference is, on the top is negative, but the bottom is positive. So what would you write? When you write change of momentum, you just drop the negative, so you get 2 mv. You understand? Uh? But that's what I'm trying to tell you. When you, want find, when you want to find change of momentum especially, you have to make sure that your direction is important. That means if you're taking down as positive, then up will be negative. Then if you are taking, um, that is your final minus initial. Lah. But if you take it initial minus final, you must also consider direction. Okay, never forget that. So it's never zero if it's bouncing. Do you understand? Lah? Because many people, lah, they will put the change of momentum in zero. Because going MV, coming back MV. Not, not true, lah, because you must look at direction. Do you understand? Okay, let's look at the next part. Lah. So if we want to find the direction of the change in momentum, what do we do? Now, the direction of change in momentum is actually related to your Newton's second law. If you remember Newton's second law, it says that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the net force acting on it and takes place in the direction of the force. What it basically tells you is the change in momentum must be in the direction of the force exerted on the body. So if the ball initially was moving uh, down, after colliding with the floor, it moves up. That means the floor is exerting a force on the ball up or down. Up, right now. Because during the collision, it must be pushing the ball up. That's why it moves up. Lah. So if the force is upwards, therefore the change in momentum must be also upwards. So we will say the change in momentum is 2 mv upwards. Do you understand? So let's talk about Newton's first law now. Ah. So for Newton's first law, uh, it says that the body will remain in state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless a net external force acts on it to change that state. So what it basically means is this. Uh, what is the implication uh, for us uh, during our solving questions? Uh? So firstly, if you see an object stationary, at rest means stationary, uh, or uniform motion in a straight line. Now, uniform motion in a straight line is a fancy way of saying 
constant velocity. That's it. So constant velocity means constant speed, constant direction. If, you, if an object is stationary or moving with constant velocity, then it means there is no net force acting. That's all. So every time you see a question that involves a stationary body or a body moving at constant velocity, you can assume the net force is zero on that body. Understand? Okay?